Hey, it's Mike here, and today, eating disorders and a vegan diet. In particular, we're gonna ask the question, are vegans more prone to getting eating disorders than the normal population? And we're gonna look at research particularly on that question. Then we're gonna look at a case study of a girl in a recent BBC video who claimed to have masked her eating disorder using a vegan diet. And finally, yes, I did cut my hair, and yes, we are back to the old leafy background just for old time's sake. All right, let's do this. And I wanna mention that I've been sort of putting off doing an eating disorder specific video because I've got a lot of requests for like eating disorder recovery videos and things like that, which I have no experience with and I am not an expert on. But I realized that we can zoom out and look at this issue from a bigger picture perspective and look at some research and dispel some myths on it in general. So along those lines for a larger bit of context, there's definitely been an effort by a certain camp, an anti-vegan camp to paint veganism as an eating disorder. And the common logic there is that because eating disorders involve restriction because you are restricting animal products, therefore veganism is an eating disorder. And I did make a video response to one brand of this accusation that a vegan diet is by definition orthorexic, which is an eating disorder that's focused on purity. It's a bit old, but I'll link it at the end. All right, moving right along, let's leave the girl who mastered eating disorder with a vegan diet till later and first answer the main question here, are vegans more prone to getting eating disorders? Which brings me to a study that answers that. This one that was brought to my attention by Dr. Greger's also very recent video on the topic, but he quickly glossed over a lot of the details. So let's take a little bit more time and look deeper at this study. The study is quite recent from 2017, looked at 358 vegans and 220 meat eaters, making it really the biggest study of its kind. The study Body sample was also 80% women, which as we know, unfortunately, is a gender that's more prone to eating disorders. And one thing that they found was that the vegan group was eating more fruits and vegetables. Wow, <laughs> Nobel Prize. But most importantly, they gave him an eating disorder examination questionnaire, and the result was vegan scored significantly lower than omnivores. And again, this is a measure of pathological eating behavior. In other words, they exhibited less eating disorder tendencies, less. And their conclusion was that while there wasn't any crazy difference, vegans have slightly healthier attitudes and behaviors toward food. While restricting things, especially calories, can be dangerous, but that doesn't mean that all restriction is automatically unhealthy eating. And I think your average person might be a little bit inconsistent on what they view as unhealthy restriction. Hey Ned, I gave up soda. Cool, man. Hey Ned, I gave up candy bars. All right. Hey Ned, I gave up donuts. Good job. Hey Ned, I gave up animal flesh and animal secretions. Ah, now you have an eating disorder. All right, now let's crack open the study's charts and look at the details. The most interesting right off the bat is that the vegans had significantly lower desires for thinness. I found this really interesting because they did a good job of matching the BMI of the different groups. There's actually quite a lot of overweight and obese vegans here that they studied, yet they felt better about it. And I wonder speculatively if that's because they were already experiencing weight loss or if they just felt more secure. Vegans also did better on many metrics such as restraint and food concern. Vegans were also lower on the binge eating scale, although I wanna note this is one of the few findings that wasn't statistically significant. Maybe with a larger sample, it would have been. But I would venture to say with lower concern about eating, you're less likely to avoid meals and dodge foods until you're so hungry that you then lapse into a binge. Another interesting finding, which is a bit off topic here, but they did measure, and that was that vegans had way lower alcohol dependency scores. And it makes me wonder if it's because vegans in general eat more of those whole carbohydrates, things like whole grains and legumes. They're getting more carbs in general, and therefore they might have less carb cravings, which could manifest as a desire to drink alcohol. Or they could simply just have better self-control, which allows them to be vegan in the first place. We don't know these things, I'm just guessing. Now for a final quote from the study that I think really answers the direct question in the title of this video, and that is, well, the researchers didn't wanna say that the vegans were outright healthier overall than the omnivores. They say the vegans, quote, do not experience greater eating related pathology than their omnivorous counterparts. So based off the best data we have encountered a popular belief, vegans appear to be better off in the area of eating disorder pathology. So next time this conversation comes up, this study should definitely be a part of that conversation. And obviously there's still gonna be people who are eating a vegan diet that have eating disorders and this study should not be used to justify that, just to look at the overall trends. All right, now let's move on to a bit of a case study, the super recently released BBC video about this girl who says that she masked her eating disorder with a vegan diet. Here she is. I became a vegan back in September 2017, although I told everyone that it was this ethical argument and that I really wanted to save the planet and the animals. It was, I'd say, at least subconsciously um, part of my eating disorder. 
And I do see this as a bit of a trend, people with pre-existing eating disorders sort of seeing veganism as a haven in which they can hide a disordered eating pattern behind a particular type of diet. One point here that I found to be perhaps the most interesting is that she said she was actually hiding behind an ethical aspect of veganism. So in a lot of kind of anti-health promotion vegans are saying, oh, all these people with eating disorders are just coming in for the health. Clearly that's not the case. Eating disorders are a very complex issue, in which case they can even hide behind something as benign as not killing animals. Anyway, then her parents confronted her about her unhealthy weight loss and she decided to stop being vegan. My parents kind of sat me down and were like, look, you've lost all this weight and we're worried about you. And that was what kind of made me think, perhaps this isn't the right diet for me. She now eats sort of a flexitarian lower meat diet and says her relationship with food is better. And here's her last statement. I'd say if you've had an eating disorder, especially a restrictive one, fair enough, come to veganism when you're recovered and you're in a good place with food. I'm not saying that veganism is a negative way to eat. It's a sustainable lifestyle, but that's not necessarily one that people with eating disorders should adopt. I'm a little torn here because I partially agree with her and I partially disagree with her. I agree with her in the sense that if you're just sort of shopping around for a diet that you can hide your eating disorder behind, then absolutely don't go vegan. You know, people do it with cleansing, they do it with intermittent fasting, they do it with keto and other low carb diets. It's just something that people do, I guess. But it is true, somebody who deals with their internal eating disorder issues before going vegan might have a better chance of being vegan long-term if they really wanna do that, that way they won't fail. And this is where I disagree with her, and that is that I think it depends on the person because I've seen so many comments from you guys, the same sort of echoed over and over again that you had an eating disorder until you finally went vegan and then your relationship with food changed, you were finally eating things that you didn't feel like were damaging your body or other beings. And you can pause on these examples if you wanna read them. And obviously that is an ideal situation, but this makes me think back to the previous study that it might've been more powerful than we thought because clearly there is an attraction to veganism by people who have eating disorders. Therefore, there's probably a higher portion of people that go vegan who have eating disorders. Yet, when we're looking at vegans from that study, they have lower eating disorder behavior. And yeah, that is stretching the conclusion of the study a little bit. So we would really need a study where we take people with eating disorders, put them into different groups, randomize it and see how they do. But for those who do have an eating disorder and they really do wanna go vegan, I think it's just fair to say that you should work with a professional and see how your eating disorder, how you personally respond to a vegan diet. And I do have a final point here that I think is my responsibility to reiterate, even though I did touch on it briefly in my what's a whole food anyway video. And that was in terms of me promoting a whole food vegan diet and whether or not you should really go all the way on it. This is a diet that's designed to prevent and reverse diseases like heart disease and diabetes. But if the biggest personal risk to you is an eating disorder, that's not what's gonna kill most people. But if it is in the case for you, then you should consider maybe not going super oil free or sugar free and all these things because it might be healthier for you to keep eating at restaurants and, and not restricting too much. Obviously it's up to you to decide, but most people who are prone to eating disorders tend to be younger females and that means you're probably not at risk of having a heart attack. So in the end, it appears from the best data that we have that vegans are in fact not more prone to developing eating disorders, to having disordered eating than people who eat meat. Surprisingly, considering that this appears to be a very attractive diet for people who already have eating disorders. So to everyone who's really trying to throw a punch at veganism in general under the guise of eating disorder concern, uh, the data show that it's not really a valid attack. That being said, I'm sure there are some some individuals that develop eating disorders on a vegan diet it doesn't appear to be more than a standard diet. And of course there are those people who mask their eating disorders with a vegan diet. And that is a cautionary tale. Now I wanna mention I've gotten again, suggestions to do sort of an eating disorder recovery video, but I'm not an expert. So if you know of a particular expert that you would like me to have on this show, whatever you wanna call it, then let me know down below. Okay, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next video.